What should people expect to experience with side effects for a second shot? So with the second shot, what we have seen that to some degree, uh, the side effects do tend to be a little bit more common and a little bit more severe. So the stuff that you may have experienced with the first shot, headache, fever, muscle aches, the, the, the typical vaccine symptoms, as we say, they might be a little bit more severe. The second shot does seem to pack a bit of a punch. Uh, so you have to be ready for that. You have to know what's coming. They are short lived and they do go away and they don't leave any lasting damage. So uh, be reassured, be, be ready to accept the fact that there's gonna be some unpleasantness for the first couple of days, but it will go away and you will get back to normal. And the benefit of course is that afterwards, uh, you will be fully immune and be uh, you know, in a much better position to be able to get back to normal life without fear of, 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 uh, of catching COVID. 14 days after the fact. But it's interesting. I mean, as you said, it's, it's reassuring to know that it's not something that's, that should be causing concern. But I, for example, when I had my second shot, I didn't even get sight pain. I was just as good as could be. I didn't even notice. So it does vary, I guess, according to, to the person. I mean, why, why is it like that? And, and why is it even more intense in some people the second go around? Yeah, so I was the same as you. I had virtually no side effects after either of my two doses. And it's very person-to-person -person dependent. It has largely to do with uh, genetics. And uh, to a certain extent, there is no rhyme or reason to it. it. What's actually happening is that your body is generating an immune response after you get vaccinated. And what you are feeling are the same types of symptoms when you would have any type of immune response, the fever, the muscle aches, the chills. Uh, why do some people feel it more than others? It's again, it's a very individual response and there's no real, real way to predict it. And it doesn't really mean much in the grand scheme of things. So they're just side effects that you have to endure. Uh, and again, once you can ride them out, they usually go away in a few days. So you, you just have to realize that they are there and, and try not to read too much into it and try not to read too, and not, try not to worry about it too much because they don't seem to have any lasting consequences. Even if you didn't get these, this is the question I get a lot. Even if you didn't get these reactions, that doesn't mean that the vaccine didn't work. I think a lot of people are, are concerned about that, but that is, that is not the case. Of course. So the cells are activated even if you don't feel it, even if there's that huge range in, in responses. That is interesting. Something that we've talked about, I think, for the last two or three weeks now is uh, the rare side effect of myocarditis or heart inflammation uh, associated with mRNA vaccines. So that's the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine and the Moderna vaccine. Health Canada, apparently, Dr. Labos, looking at following the FDA's lead in all of this and changing the literature for these particular vaccines to indicate this as a rare potential side effect. I'm just wondering what you think about that if there's any information that has changed on this since we last discussed this and what actually a change in language and literature means and does. Well, so the reason why this has to change are the legal requirements. Any medication, vaccine, pill, what have you, has to have a, a, an official monograph that describes its uses and, 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 and side effects. So this changes as our knowledge of medications change. It doesn't mean anything per se. It's a legal requirement. It doesn't have any scientific consequences. What we know about the side effects of, of myocarditis are, to a certain extent, what, what we knew even last week. It is there. It does happen. It predominantly happens in young men uh, you know, under the age of 24 after their second dose. But even in this age group, even in this age group where it's you know, the most common, the risk is extremely low. You're talking about a risk of 0 0.0005, 0 0.006, a very, very low rate. So to put it another way, and perhaps in a more reassuring way, even if you are a young man under the age of 24 who's about to get their second dose of an mRNA vaccine, 99.99% of the time, you are not going to have a complication from this vaccine. So it's, it's, it, it, the, the risk of this is extremely, extremely low. I thought the data was interesting too. Even those who do get that side effect and go into hospital, the vast majority, it resolves and uh, everything is just fine at the end too. So I just want to keep tabs on that with you. It's good to have a cardiologist who can mm -hmm. give us the perspective on this particular rare side effect. Um, 
In conclusion today, I was just talking about Quebec, the whole of the province going into the green zone as of today, the lowest level of alert as far as the province's color-coded uh, color system. Just in time, Dr. Labos, for the Montreal Canadiens to begin their finals and the series against Tampa. Don't want to be a, you know, wet blanket in all of this thing, but there's going to be massive celebrations. Is there anything that people need to keep in mind? Uh, I think people have to remember is that, listen, it's it's fine to celebrate. Maybe don't gather in, in huge groups as we saw last week. So uh, if, if you think it's a good idea to, to gather with tens of thousands of other people in the streets of Montreal, uh, please don't. Uh, it's maybe not the best idea right now. You don't know who's around you. You don't know what their vaccination status is. You don't know what their COVID status is. So be a little bit careful. If you want to have small gatherings and, and watch it on TV, I think that's fine. If you want to pay exorbitant amounts to see the game live, you probably have more money than I do. Uh, but it, it, just a little bit of care and a little bit of caution. Uh, this is not the time to be gathering in large groups. I understand people's excitement and enthusiasm, but uh, be optimistic, but just, you know, a little bit of care is going to serve us well uh, in the long term here. 24000 for seats in the Reds. I saw that. You're right. It's a pretty pricey when they come home later in the week. Uh, Dr. Lavos, thank you very much for advice in all areas this morning. Really appreciate it again, as always. <laughs> My pleasure. Take care.